Talk uh, League of Ireland football. Uh, delighted to say uh, Keith Cowan joins us once again on Highland. Keith, it's uh, good to see you. Good to see you too, Ashley. Thanks for having me on again. Yeah, good to see you as well. You've got the, the latest club colours on you. So you have? That's your, uh, yeah, just yeah. about to jump in the car to go to training. So this is the only reason I have it all. I have to get have to be prepped. So uh, I haven't much time to get changed when we get down there. So yeah. just happen to have it off today. Yeah, well, listen, uh, you were back at Finn Park for the first time since since you departed. Uh, you did, of course, have a fantastic career with Harps over two spells. Uh, for you personally, what was it like coming back, playing for a different club at Fun Park last Monday? Yeah, I must say it was strange now. It was it was very strange coming back and, uh, you know, I suppose being on the, the different side of it and, uh, you know, kind of hoping for a, well, you know, more so than, than uh, I suppose. And, but at, at the same time, because of things have switched around, I was still in the same changing room because Harps have the new changing rooms now and they're across the, the other side of the pitch. So no, I must say it was it was nice to be back. It was uh, a couple of old faces there that that they still around and it was nice to see them and uh, it was nice to, you know, get a chat to them. But uh, ultimately, as I said there at the start, it was it, it was strange going out in the pitch and, you know, so it was not representing Harps. But, um, you know, once the once the whistle went, you know, it was kind of business as usual. Yeah. Uh, Ollie said after the game that 2-2 two -two was a fair enough result. Would you concur with that, would you? I probably was, you know, over the over the ninety minutes. Um, like we, st we I, f I felt ourselves. We started we started the game particularly well, um, and then you know maybe through a few mistakes and that there, maybe trying to you know play in the wrong areas, we kind of invited a bit of pressure and allowed Harps to get a foothold in the game, um, and they got two two qu uh, quick goals to see them under half time. I thought in the second half maybe we had a bit more of the play and try to create things a bit more. I maybe seemed like they were happy enough to maybe sit with with, with the two one, but then again created a couple of great chances near the end. Sam Long, our keepers, made a couple of great saves. Uh, Andy Lyons just pulled one off the line. Uh, sorry, Andy Cunz pulled one off the line. Um, so no, that was it was really kind of all hands to the pump. You know, we, we created I suppose a couple of good chances in the second half. So I suppose you know over the over the case the the, the, the whole ninety minutes I'd say a draw was probably a fair result. Yeah. Okay. Next up, we'll just stay with draw because you have got Bowes now on Friday night. Bowes will be buoyed by that one against Sligo on uh, on Tuesday night uh, going to the showgrounds and taking victory. What sort of test do you expect them now on Friday against them? Yeah, look, that's going to give them a big lift. I suppose you know they'd have been disappointed conceding the late goal against Derry last Friday night. Uh, for Derry, take all three points down there. You know, going then picking themselves up, going to Sligo, which you know have been uh, have been going really well. Um, you know, to, to to go there and to get uh, to get affected at, at the showgrounds is you know is quite difficult. You know, but then I suppose Sligo went there on Friday, and uh, sorry, Shells went there on Friday and uh, got a result at the showgrounds as well. So it'll be two Dublin teams. You know, have gone there and got six points, and then you went with. With UCD to go there as well on uh, on on Saturday coming, um, they'll be hoping to maybe pick up their first one of the season. Looks like we'll be disappointed with the way that it's gone for them. But uh, yeah, look, Bozo will, will will have had a massive lift from that, as I said, with the disappointment of Friday night pass. So they'll be they'll they, they'll be tails up coming to draw and they'll be expecting to lift all three points there as well. I'd say. Yeah, our, our main game here in Highland this weekend is of course going to be the Northwest Derby. Of uh, Finn Harps against Derry City on on Saturday. Uh, you've already played in a derby this year, Keith, uh, against Dundalk in a derby that you've won as well. Uh, what's uh, can you compare uh, a Louth derby to uh, to a Northwest derby? Yeah, I suppose having played in both of them now, I suppose that there there are similarities. Yes, um, I suppose you know with both sets of fans, you know, with it and and both derbies. Both sets of fans, you know, can make, get themselves involved in the game. Uh, there was a great over and back down in life w with them, and it's always the same, whether it's in whether it's in Fun Park or whether it's in uh, and the Brandywell as well. So, yeah, they'll look at typical derbies, you know, kind of a bit of, of blown thunder, bit of you know, argy bargy between the two sets of players and that as well. Um, but I suppose you know, the having played in, having played it in more of the northwest derbies. There's uh, there's quite nothing quite like uh, a fun half Derry City Derby really. Yeah, well, there's another one to come this weekend. How important then is this game for Fun Harps against Derry on on Saturday, Keith? Given that they haven't had a home win yet. Yeah, I think it's I think it's massive for Harps. I think um, you know when when it comes to derbies, like you know, form really goes out the window, and uh, I feel Derry will know that as well. 
Um, you know, there's been sides in the past that, that have gone to Fun Park, the I City sides that have you know been doing really well, and it's just it's just a totally different atmosphere. You know, uh, the the crowd can get on top of you; they can affect the game as well. Um, we've we've seen it in the past where you know where players maybe have done things you know out of character or maybe a bit rash at times, and you know it can take something as simple as a you know a silly tackle or a silly booking that can you know change the whole flow of the game. So I think Harps will really be looking forward to this one. I think they'll see this as a, as a big opportunity, maybe to maybe to get that first home win. There's no reason why they can't. You know the experience that they have in the ranks. You know the with Barry McNamee, Connolly. You know you know behind the last day, getting a the goal. Eric Woods as well getting the goal. Ryan Rennie. They, they have quality within the side. So there's no reason. Uh, there's no reason why they couldn't be looking this to pick up three points. Yeah. Well, some might say that maybe if Harps were to win this weekend, it would probably be a a league upset given where, where, where Derry are. How far away are Harps from Derry, do you think, on the pitch, Keith? Because over the last number of seasons, we've seen them a lot closer. But that has changed this year, has it? Yeah, well, I suppose just Derry seem to have had this great start, you know, where they, you know, have, yes, they, look, they have a great side and they have a great squad and they have, you know, good manager, etc. But, they, you know, they're, they're getting, seem to be getting that bit of luck. And you can say, well, you know, they're creating their own luck, but they're picking up points. They're, they're picking up wins, scoring goals in, you know, 93rd, 94th minute of games, you know, which is great. But so that they seem to be, you know, having their real purple patch now. You know, there's always in a season where a team will struggle to put, you know, will, will struggle to get results. Maybe this is Harps, you know, time where they're struggling to get a bit of form, struggling to get a few results, and they'll and they'll uh, kick on, you know, somewhere maybe near the middle of the season, or maybe it could happen on, on the night, we don't know. So it's just, it's, it can be a case of, you know, getting that wee bit of luck at the right time. As I said there before, it can come in a tackle, it can come in any form, just to just to change the flow of the game. And we know like a, a Northwest Derby, it, it, sorry, a Northwest Derby, it does get the, it does get the juices flowing. It does bring out something in players. Players kind of go to a different level where you can hope they would go there every week, but, uh, Players do really raise the occasion, and and you know, Harsh fans and you know Harsh players and Harsh management will be looking that that definitely happens on Saturday. Well, you mentioned about a purple patch that Derry's going through. I'll tell you, that's not a bad purple patch, is it, Keith? You find yourself unbeaten in the league with what eight games played, uh, and you've got a six point advantage at at the top of the table. Um, if you're talking about purple patches, that's the sort of patch that you want, and it is a fantastic start for the Candy Stripes. Yeah, great after eight games to find themselves top, as you said, with the six point cushion there. Um, you know, confidence will be sky high throughout that team. You know, you talk about the likes of Will Patchen, you know, Jimmy Monigle there, you know, a couple of goals, like four or five goals each already this season. Roland Boyce, as usual, seems to be chipping in with goals. Uh, I'd say they're, they're, I'd say with losing a couple last injury as well, which they've been disappointed about, then you have Patrick Magalini coming back in, and apparently he's making a massive difference um, already, just coming back in and just grabbing those games by the, by the scruff of the neck, as I, I think is. As Ray Higgins alluded to there last week, uh, up and up up on Daily Mount when they got the two one win later on against Bowes. So all that uh, all that experience and again just all that momentum, you know, is it's, it just seems to be going Derry's way at the moment, and they'll be hoping that that just keeps it just keeps continuing. You look at the quality that Shamrock Rovers have, you look at the quality that Pats have as well. So they'll be hot in their heels, but at the minute it seems to be Derry uh, that are leading the way, and as I say, they'll be hoping that'll continue. Yeah, the game on Tuesday night, as we know, finished 2-2. Uh, could there be lots of goals in the Starby at the weekend? Yeah, well, you know, I suppose, you know, uh, harsh fans and, you know, they would have been saying that they were like, they're struggling for goals, that they're creating these chances. But, you know, they've been, they've been, they've been struggling, to, uh, they've been struggling to, to finish them off. Two goals will definitely lift the confidence of strikers. You know, that's the way it goes. Um, again, they'll be just hoping maybe... They'll get, you know they can keep maybe a few out at, at the other end as well. We we heard uh, young Mulroney come in there to make his uh, make his debut. Obviously, Mark McGinley, uh, Mark Anthony McGinley. We're not sure if he's going to be uh, eligible for the game on Saturday. Obviously, his suspension is sent off against Shamrock Rovers. So yeah, look, and again, Daryl just they'll feel like that they'll score in any minute of any game because of the way things have been going for them. So yeah, look, I've, I see goals. I see, you know, I see a couple of decisions that the referee will need to be strong on. Um, like all that there makes it makes up a great derby and it makes a great one for the fans and the, and the spectators. Yeah, there'll be a thunderous, exciting start to it, will there? Oh, indeed, indeed. That's and and that's what that's what everyone's looking forward to. You know, as I, as I said there before, like as soon as as soon as that game starts, 
form will have nothing to do with it and you know everyone will know that and, and the dairy players will know that too they they know through experience you know and they'll have within the ranks of the management and there's a few players that have been there before in those situations they'll know as soon as they get there you're facing maybe a different Finn Harris team than than maybe is playing when you when you're playing someone from Dublin or someone from down the country for the, you know so um they'll be they, they'll know what to expect Okay, uh, Sligo Rovers up against UCD on Saturday as well. Uh, Sligo will be very disappointed with that defeat at the hands of Bowes the last night. Um, where of course, they were looking to maintain their push at the top of the table, but they are fourth, and you would expect them to have too much for UCD, would you, Keith? Yeah, well, I you know I thought they might have had too much for Shells as well last weekend, but then you know that didn't seem to materialise either. They'll be very disappointed losing back to back games at home. Um, you know, one nils as well. Uh, you know, they had a, a, a great start. Aiden Kina as well. You know, top of the scoring charts so far. Just after eight games, I know, but he's up there with five goals. So, you know, he'll be looking to get back uh, back, back on the score sheet. UCD still looking for their first win. Um, you know, it's it's been a it's been a I suppose a rocky enough start for them. You know, they've 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 shown well in some games that they can be resolute and they can keep a clean sheet. Games just hasn't hasn't really worked out for them. Um, again with the UCD, you know they, you know they, they always have such great footballers, such talented players, really well organised, really well drilled. Um, but again, you know they just need that little bit extra at times to to see themselves through games. So uh, they'll be they'll be look look they'll be going there as look. Let's let's just try and get three points. Let's just try and be nice and solid. Maybe let's just try and keep a clean sheet as as uh, as what they'll be looking for. And whatever comes after that, it's, it'll be a bonus for them. Yeah, some quarter, some quarters rather might suggest that Shelburne Shamrock Rovers is a bigger derby match than, than Fun Harps against Derry this weekend, Keith. But can Damien Duff's side build on uh, some of the recent good performances and obviously that result against Sligo and cause the hoops problems that cause the defending champions problems? Yeah, well, well, they have to believe that they that, that they will, and I'm sure uh, I'm sure Damien Duff will have them uh, will have them well organised and well drilled. Um, he'll know exactly what's going on probably around the. The, the camp there over on Tala. Um, I suppose if you're asking me, is it such a, a big derby as as the Northwest Derby? I'm going to say no because I'm totally biased in that regard. And you know, I think you have to have experience maybe the the Northwest Derby. You know, even just to watch it, you know, it, it is it is something pretty special. But uh, yeah, look, I think you know it's a massive one for Shells last week going to going to Sligo. Uh, you know, getting that one up there, which is which is a, a difficult, which is going to be difficult for a lot of teams going there. So um, I think I think uh, Shams look a big distance to travel for them with the quality that we have, that they have in the ranks. You know, with the squad, they, and that's probably the biggest uh, that's the biggest problem that Bradley has is probably picking a team that he thinks is going out to you know win each week, and then and then you're thinking if if something's all right, I definitely have the players to try and tweak this. So maybe his has an embarrassment of riches. He doesn't know which which team to go with or which players to go with. So it's a great problem to have. I'm sure a lot of managers would love that problem. But uh, you know, I think just in his situation, I suppose with uh, the investment that goes in there, you know, you need to be pretty pretty much winning every week. That's the pressure that comes with the top jobs. But I'm sure they'll be able to handle it, and uh, they'll be looking to they'll be looking to pick up all three points. We're going to talk apart. Yeah, one other game at Richmond Park, St. Pat's against Dundalk. I think this one was draw written all over it. Keith, would you agree? Uh, again, no. Uh, Pat's have such, Pat's have such great quality, you know, and and again Dundalk on the, um, with what they've shown, it kind of fits and starts this season that, that that they have the same. You know, they they have the players. You know, they it really it could be a, you're you're talking it's, it wouldn't be a f- far away with the draw on this one. Um, again, you look. You have players within the ranks that can score goals. Um, again, it's a it's a tough one to call, but I think you might be too far away with the draw. You get your fiver on that this week, Ashley. You'll see. <laughs> you might get a few quid back. Uh, okay, I might go for home ones as well. Maybe draw on fun harps. <laughs> go for it. Go for it. <laughs> you plenty of money anyway. So that's no, 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 that. <laughs> Listen, Keith. It's always good to talk to you. It's good to see you, and uh, we'll chat again over the weekend. Cheers, Ashley. Good man. Thanks, so much.